So this ugly looking device is a YubiKey and it's designed to push your account security to the next level. So yes, this is your exchange account. If you don't want hackers attacking your exchange, you might want to give this little device a consideration. And it also applies to not just your exchange accounts, but also to your Google accounts. So protecting your email, etc. And this is extremely important in crypto because there are a lot more hackers out there and a lot more instances where cryptocurrency gets stolen. At its very core, if you activate one of these on your accounts, it means that hackers, even if hackers breach everything, they'll need to have access to your physical device. So they'll actually need to have this physical key in their hand on their computer in order to withdraw any cryptocurrencies or any money or reach anything. So that's a lot of power right there because we definitely read reports in the past where hackers have gotten very creative. They've used SIM swap hacks to attack various people and stolen quite some cryptocurrency. So it's worth looking at. But at the other side, the flip side too, and this is why you want to stay until the end of the video, we'll talk about some limitations of this device too. I've been using YubiKeys for roughly a year now using different models. And there's a reason I picked this up. So this is why I picked up two of these. There are some strengths and limitations I do want to talk about. There's some like real serious pet peeves about these devices, which I really don't like. So I'll talk about them towards the end of the video as well. So overall, these videos are guides on how to protect your accounts in cryptocurrencies. Um, I cover like ledger, hardware, devices, etc. So if you guys want to check out further more information about that, check out the list up here to find out how to increase account security on everything so no one can take stuff. All right, starting off with installing the device. This device might look super ugly and super weird, but it's actually super simple. It just plugs directly into your USB like a normal USB key. So there you go. That's plugged in. So assuming you have these normal USB ports, it just plugs straight in. For my own computer, it's actually off screen. That's what I have to show you with that little laptop over there. So it's... All right. Now I'll show you how to set it up on an exchange account. You can go to your account and click on the security set section and you can have the 2FA, you can see the recommended is a UB key and I'm gonna click it to set up. So this is the pop-up that shows up. It's a security key set up. Okay, you can click okay to start. Now let Binance see the model and make your security key. Yes, for sure. And then you can also create a pin for the security key, so. Now after creating a pen, I'm gonna to have to actually physically touch the key. So this is where you can see me awkwardly reach over to touch it. So I have to physically touch it with my phone and confirm it. Now, and that's pretty much it. So after touching the key physically, I can put it say, UB key blue ugly one. And as a final step, I have to do a verification call. So both for email and Google to lock it in. Yes, this is very secure and it's the way it should be. All right, now that's done. Depending on the website, you can also set when you use the key. So for example, by default on Binance, for withdrawals, API, login, and reset password, they all require the use of the UB key. Now for me personally, I find withdrawal super useful. I don't want any hackers stealing my cryptocurrency, so I always leave this on. For login, this is when, because sometimes I log in outside, I don't always want to have my UB key around. So I usually turn this off. So let me just turn this off. Boom, done. So in this situation with the login off, this means that I can log in without the key, but anytime I want to withdraw any funds or reset the password, I absolutely require to use a key. And that's it. So I've successfully added the UB key to my Binance account and it adds an extra layer of security. And this will prevent hacks like the ones that we read quite a lot. So Coinbase account hacked, hacker takes the 2FA because it's SMS based 2FA and someone unfortunately compromised their phone account. That's how this hack happened. And another one, yet again, same thing, SIM card swaps and these various creative methods of hackers 
taking over your phone, your Gmail, everything, this is 100% preventable by a YubiKey. On top of this, you can also add YubiKey verification to your email as well. So this is an example of the Google security page where you can activate a two-factor authentication. I definitely don't recommend SMS. So this can add that to your email accounts or other exchange accounts like FTX. They recently added YubiKey support. So anyways, at the end of the day, don't use MS SMS. That seems to be like the worst, worst one. And then adding the YubiKey is the best in the class at this current point. Now onto strengths and limitations, because this device, while it might be useful for me, it might not be useful for everyone else. So yet again, this is I'm put, listing out a few points that you might want to consider why and why not to have this device. First of all, if you use exchanges, I would definitely say, and you leave a considerable amount of money on exchanges, this is definitely powerful because it gives you that extra degree of security. The way I set it up is that during trading times, just like this, when I need to deploy capital, I have funds on exchanges. This is the way it works. Other times, um, and obviously I still have huddle and use these to keep cryptocurrencies long time. And I'll tell you exactly why. But if funds are on exchanges, I'll definitely say um, having this is valuable. But you do have to check if your exchange supports YubiKey. I know that not all exchanges support it. So make sure you check up your exchange if that supports it or not. All right, next up, I'm gonna hit you guys with a limitation. So every time I make my withdrawal, I said that so I need a YubiKey. And this is very powerful, so it prevents hackers from stealing my coins. But at the same time, it does offer some inconvenience. In fact, quite a lot of inconvenience. So if you use like multiple devices, so this is actually why I got two of these, because I use devices in multiple locations in the studio here and also at home, then I don't want to carry these around every single day. So you do fall down the rabbit hole of, oh my God, like I need to use some funds now. I need the key. Where's the key? So this does add an inconvenience to with withdrawal. So you have to kind of weigh that out between whether you want the extra security or you want to have convenience. This is especially true if you're a mobile power user. I know some people go, you know, traveling and they need to send crypto around and they need to have access and yeah, carrying this on top of everything doesn't always make sense. So just leaving that out there. Next, I'm going to hit you with another limitation, which is that this does not prevent exchange hacks. So whilst you can secure your account very well on your side, sometimes the exchange itself drops the ball and stuff happens. All right, coming to the last bit, the most annoying part is which YubiKey should you get? There are so many different models on the website and the price ranges from 20 bucks all the way up to 70. So luckily for me here, I had personal experience with the $20 one and the $70 one. And uh, I would honestly say that this is better. This actually offers a better experience. So it's definitely not a case where the more expensive, the better it is. And I'll tell you a few reasons of why I chose to pick and when. So first and foremost, it depends on which type of connection you have on your computers. So initially I thought, oh, type C would be good, especially for MacBooks because the new MacBooks just you can just plug the type C straight into it. And also for phones and mobile. I'll get to the mobile part because unfortunately a lot of exchanges don't support mobile for YubiKey. So I'll talk touch about that later, but just consider the connection and the ports on your computer. Normally when I need to withdraw cryptocurrencies, it's usually at home. I usually don't do it outside. It doesn't make much sense for me. So having a key that connects permanently to my computer taking up a type a slot actually makes a lot of sense so just normally these slots out there if it takes one i don't really mind and that's why this one turns out to be quite good for me now concerning mobile so the one that i got first was this one this is the expensive uh, yubikey 5 5 ci not sure how they even name these, but this little one has both support for iPhone and for USB Type-C, which means it supports Android and for 
um, MacBooks and also PCs. I mean, if you have a newer PC build, you also have this as well. But I do want to point out that a lot of apps do not natively support YubiKey. So this actually includes the Binance app as well. I didn't know that. But even if you can physically connect it into your computer, or I mean your, your phone, like you can connect it into your phone, it doesn't mean the app supports it, which defeats the whole purpose of having it in the first place. So you can obviously see by the tone of my voice, I'm a little bit angry that there wasn't any support for this. So as of now on the Android app, it doesn't have support for the YubiKey. I know different apps are different, so Google would support it, but you know, unfortunately the exchanges that I use do not. So this is a useless feature. It can't really connect to any of my mobile devices. And yet again, I also realized that I don't really need to use it when I'm out. And of course the next consideration is price. Honestly, 20 bucks is a great price. I think that's what someone should pay for something like this. I mean, 70 is really pushing to the edge. So typically speaking, if if you're new, just buy the one with the least features. I mean, do you really need NFC? I don't need NFC. I just bought the cheapest, easiest one. That's why I bought two of these. So I can have one at home and one in the office. It makes sense for me, right? So I would say for all extents and purposes, if you have a regular USB connection on a computer, this will be good. If you have a MacBook, then fine. You know, if you can already afford a MacBook, then just take something with the USB Type-C connection. So either this one, this one, or this one. It's like, it depends on which size you want. Yet again, like how big you want it. But at the end of the day, I. For me, because I use it at home, I don't mind a cheap big one. If you guys have any additional questions, leave them down below. Security considerations, concerns, etc. Leave a comment down below. We also have a website review on that. So check it out. Um, the full review for a write-up of this. And well, with that, guys, thank you guys so much for watching. If it helped you, make sure you like, subscribe, and share it to your friends as well. And with that, see you next time.